Okay, so to add materials, it's it's pretty simple. We have the M here, um, which is the materials, and we bring up the material editor, and right now we can see that there's a uh, there's nothing. We just have the default material applied. There's nothing special. There's a couple ways to get materials to use. If I right click here, I can create a material. And there's several types of materials I could create, but that's not something I need to do right now. I can just load a material. And when I do that, it brings me to the, the default directory. Um, and I can come in, there's paint, and car paint, glass, HDRIs, which we'll get to a little later, porcelain textures, velvets, and woods. Um, but what I want to do is add glass. Right now I have glass in the scene, and uh, it's, it's, you know, it's rendering is opaque. We don't see anything. So we have a couple different glass options here, and I'm just going to pick clear glass. and Open that one up, and if I click clear glass, I can preview it. And we see here in the little bubble that there's a checker background. It's black and white, and, and that's not real. That would never actually render, but it's showing that the sphere of glass is actually deforming the checker. It's my way of seeing that it's going to bend the light. And how that works actually is through all these settings, and there's lots of them. Um, the refraction is set to an IOR of 1.55. Now that's the standard for glass. An IOR is an uh, incident of refraction. It's kind of the angle of which light goes in, bends, and comes back out. So with that, just with those simple settings, I'm going to take that and I want to apply it to my glass. To do that, there's a couple different ways. I can click a piece of glass like this, and then right click and say apply to selection. Now when I render that piece would be glass. I can also say right clicking the, the material here and say apply to layer. Now I was very careful that when I built the model every material is on its own separate layer. So if I say apply to, apply to layer and click my glass layer, now everything on that layer is glass. So if I close my material editor, here I can right click in Rhino and say select objects. And you can see that although the sun is on that layer, I can move it off. The sun would never render as a glass. It's it's not a light can't have a material applied to it in that way. So you can see here I have all the different uh, glass faces that will now render completely see-through. So let's try to set up a nicer shot. Um, I want to come in here and, and, and really move into the space, right? So this will be a nice way to show the shadows actually cast into the building um, and, and see a little bit more. Um, I'm not too happy with kind of the, the view. I have this column right here in the middle. So what I'm going to do is right click perspective, go to viewport properties, and with that it brings up a dialog box. And right now I'm set at a 35 millimeter lens. The standard is actually 50, so if I jump back into 50, you can see how much less I see. So bringing that back up, I'm going to drop this down to a 24 millimeter lens. It's, it's going to allow me to see a lot more. I think a lot of architectural photography is done with a, a very short lens, 18 millimeter, 24 millimeter, 32 millimeter. And there's just something about seeing all these lines converge that's, it, that's very appealing. It's, uh, it just works as a good aesthetic. So if I pull out a little bit and and back just barely entering through the doors, I think I'll have a pretty good view. Here, you know, I could be up towards the ceiling, but this is about head height, or we could go very low perspective. This will work for me. So let's just give it a shot and see what we get when we render. You know, now that we're inside, um, we might have far less light and we might have to play with our camera settings to actually improve the amount of uh, exposure inside the building. Uh, you know, that doesn't mean that we need to move away from a daylight system and start plopping in additional interior lights. Daylighting is going to work for us, um, but you can already tell it's fairly dark in here and we're not kind of getting the contrast and the shadows that we'd hope. Additionally, you can see we have cr some pretty wild reflections in the glass. Uh, and and I don't know that I really want them to be that strong. So maybe we can come in and edit the glass so that it's not a 1.55. We can we can reduce that and and say that it's very, you know, kind of translucent and we can see right through it. Um, 
but as it finished rendering, you know, it's not that bad. It looks it looks pretty decent. So let's move the sun so we'd actually get some shadows coming inside and see if we can keep playing with this image. Um, before I do all that, I want to save this perspective. So by right-clicking perspective, set view, I can say name view. And in Rhino 5 we have this nice little dialog window and I say save as. I'm going to call it interior, interior 1. And now I can change my scene here and just click that back and I go right back inside. So here, I'm going to delete my sun. Uh, so I definitely don't need to have two of them. Come back into the sun system. I'm still in Madrid, um, but I'm going to say it's a little later in the afternoon, maybe 2 o'clock. So now when I put the sun, you can see it's more likely to shine into the scene. Uh, additionally, let's go back to the name view, interior 1. And I can even go into Rhino Rendered uh, Preview and just see, you know, kind of what it is I'm getting out. Uh, you know, and as I move outside, yeah, I'm trying to get that statue because it's that's pretty quintessential to the scene. It's definitely an iconic figure of the Barcelona Pavilion. Um, so let's try this as our new render scene. All right, so we're getting a little closer. I'm still not getting the light inside that I was hoping to get. And also because I deleted the sun and created a new one, you can see how crisp those shadows are, and I definitely don't want that. But I am seeing that figure back there, and I, I do think this is a pretty nice shot. So let's see if we can change a few settings uh, and, and, and get the rendering exactly where we want it to be. So with the sun, with the light selected, I am going to type in properties because I closed it. I'm going to dock this over here on the side and click my light properties and come in again and set this up to maybe 100. Um, and with that, let's go into the material and with the clear glass selected, I'm going to lower the incident of refraction to 1.1. Now if I preview this, you can see that the uh, the background and the bending completely change. It's a very different type of glass. Um, additionally, if I came in and said its transparency wasn't fully transparent, and, and this would black would be 100% opaque, white is 100% transparent, I'm just going to slide it down and, and make it so that the glass isn't fully see-through. <clears throat> I can also do that um, where are we at? right here under the refraction. So here black is see-through and I'm going to go up a little bit to gray. And If I preview that, you can see it's a little fuzzy, a little frosted. The other thing I can do here is right now the color of the glass is black. And I can say, well, no, you know, I actually want it to be a little green, uh, but kind of a greenish gray on the white side. So here it's previewing one last time and it just has the slightest hint and is a little smoky and foggy which is what I'm hoping for the scene. Alright, so let's see if we can set up one more view just to see what we have. Uh, kind of get in here. Let's go from the outside and see if we can get some some nice shots here. And I'll try to for fast forward through all these renderings so you're not wasting your time sitting and watching a, a rendering take place. All right, so there we have it. Um, the rendering took a little bit to finish, um, and you know we're getting there. It's always a work in progress. Uh, it's pretty rare that I come in, apply all my materials, and click render, and I'm just happy with it. It's kind of incremental steps, little by little, uh, small changes and small tweaks that you work your way to a final render. A lot of people would say, well, you could just stop right here and come in with Photoshop and just Photoshop everything. And that's true. That's, you know, pretty valid option. There's a, a lot of people whose Photoshop skills are way better than their rendering skills. I always push myself to do as much as I possibly can in the rendering engine and as little as possible in Photoshop. That's just what I enjoy. I like trying to get the most out of it. So in the next few tutorials here, we're going to be looking at additional material options. We need to put a traver travertine t uh, stone on the floor. We need to put a uh, metallic kind of material on, on the columns and on the, the frame of the glass. 
um, we need to come in and, and do the, the beautiful uh, granite stonework that the, the pavilion is known for. On top of that, we need to texture the bottom of the pool with rocks and put in water. Um, we can also look at options for how we can get kind of more realistic uh, sunlighting and reflections. Uh, if you look at the last frame here, we can see this horizontal line in the glass, right? That, that, that is the horizon line of this infinite plane. Um, but that wouldn't actually be the case. You know, if we, if we went to the pavilion today, we'd see reflections of trees and, and kind of bright colors reflected from cars and people and flags and all types of things. But here we're just kind of in a black and white world, so we're not getting that. So as we move through these changes, uh, little by little, we'll advance. Uh, and so in the next tutorial, we'll be looking at the next step forward, and that's materials, um, but working with metallic materials and how to create our own custom metallic materials. So look for that next.